Hello everyone, good morning. I'm making this video pretty much it's for all the domestic violence victims. I call them survivors or warriors. Okay. This is also to address Jody Sue. Okay. Jody Sue's viewers, I come to you in peace and love. As a victim of severe, I don't call myself, let's take this back. I do not call myself a victim any longer. I'm a survivor and a warrior of a kidnapping slash domestic violence issue that lasted for several years. I do understand the dynamics of domestic violence. So you have a circle. This circle is a honeymoon, honeymoon, um, it's when everybody's, when they're, everybody's getting along and the guy or girl that's, uh, abusing you is so sweet and kind, and then we have the fight, and then we have the honeymoon, it just, it's more than that, um, it involves gaslighting and manipulation and all kinds of stuff, but Nonetheless, it is a cycle. A cycle means repeat. And it's, if you can envision a circle, it's, you get together, everything's great, you fight, you argue, it gets physical most of the time, and then back to the honeymoon. It doesn't always get physical. Domestic violence comes in many forms. It comes in a verbal abuse. It comes in physical abuse. And it also comes with an emotional abuse. There's for domestic violence can, um, revolving around money. If someone is controlling your money and telling you where to spend it, or getting mad when you do, that is a form of abuse. Just so you know. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is on my thumbnail I have posted the 1-800 number for anybody that's needing assistance or abdomen, you know, that's suffering with the troubled home. If you wonder if you are being abused, if you're not quite sure if you are being abused because it's verbally or the money thing or other what you wear or something like that. Jealousy sometimes can be stuck right in the middle of being abused. Now a little bit of jealousy is okay. That's normal and it's natural. But you can put it to the extent of visualizing real scary things such as your significant other when he goes into a gas station and it takes him a little while and you think that he's either having sex or making date plans and arrangements. Now this has happened in Jody Sue's situation. Now anybody that believes that a convenience store clerk is going to be able to keep her job if she's running off and screwing in the bathroom. This is what she has wanted us to believe alongside of most of them's underage. Well, from where I'm from, Kentucky, you have to be at least 18 to work at a convenience store because you're selling cigarettes, gasoline, and 
lot of times alcohol. So, I don't understand why she would try to make you believe that Andy was going with a young juvenile that worked at a gas station. Because I don't think that's quite possible. You have to at least be 18, okay? Plus, I know, oh, I mean, furthermore, sorry, I'm just scatterbrained, but I want to get this out to you. I want you to get the right help. Also, I've noticed that she has been telling you all the wrong procedures that's going on. And, uh, and she, she is pushing this the wrong way. You do not drag a trash bag full of evidence into a domestic violence EPO emergency protection order or a you know a PO protection order at all. You do not take evidence in there. You are just sworn by your statement. So don't be if you anybody that's doing that, don't be dragging a big duffel bag of evidence in there and think they're going to look at it because, quite frankly, they're not. It's just ridiculous. That's for, like, trial-type court procedures. You also will not get child support arrangements or visitation arrangements during a domestic violence EPO protection order. So, uh, I just wanted to make sure that you all are aware that a lot of the things that Jody Sue has said is made up and it's lies and please don't follow her method because it is dead wrong and she will get you into further trouble. Okay?
drive me outside and I'm not going into details but I will tell you I got spankings with belts if I was five minutes late from the grocery store okay um, he would buy me brand new vehicles straight off the showroom floor and the first time I was late it was cut into pieces wires and tires every wire under the hood and tires to the point that a lot of times it was it not even repairable uh, he would just go buy a brand new one um, when you have mo enough money just to throw at anywhere um, things like that are disposable furniture crack the furniture in half stomp the tables go buy a new one have it replaced before the children get home this was an ongoing thing for around seven to uh, you know I, it's kind of blacked out I think it was seven or eight years I'm not really sure um, I was taken after a date and never returned my home I lived in was burnt to the ground in order to keep me there it's a long story but it is a wild one and I have said it on my lives a few times I've talked about it but I will have to make a whole series and maybe I can do that for you girls and men that's so that's suffering with this abuse I do not want you to listen to her because they are so many so many outlets 1-800-DOMESTIC-VIOLENCE is one of them you can even text them you can call and talk to people and not make that move today that's what I was going to say so I've monitored what I spent so I would sneak a dollar at a time as a change and I would also save up every little coupon to save money I got good it was it was kind of sad because I felt like I was a criminal because I was using coupons and telling him the totals was different until he uh, there's sometimes I would have to have the um, receipts a lot of time I would trick and buy um, make two orders and save my money that I would um, ring up two different orders to the line and tell the cashier that I, one was for my mother and one was for me and mine would, I would use coupons and stuff and then he would never know that I used coupons and I would put back every little penny into the duvet cover that was folded up on the very bottom of the closet so I collected all that money up and slowly, I went, well, one of these days I timed it right, I went and got me a storage building, I started putting clothes and stuff, a little bit at a time, until I had every, my birth certificates, uh, IDs and everything remade, so he didn't see them missing, and a new one in the storage, everything that we would need. I would I snuck and got a post office box. It's like I was a criminal, but really I was just finding a way to get by. So save up your money, get your post office box, reorder your driver's birth certificates and social security cards, and take them to a safe place. Even if you have to get storage, sneak your clothing to that storage building. A little at a time. If you're afraid to leave that you won't have anything, start going to yard sales. Make time to put stuff into the storage. And so you'll be set. And then, once you feel like you're ready and you've got enough money saved up, then you call that 1-800, well, you call before, you call that local s shelter and ask them to meet you somewhere and you go there and you start your life all over again they have housing assistance they have they make it to everything you're protected 
they just have every avenue. Some of them even allows you to bring pets. And they keep your pets for you because they know that's a, one of the reasons why you won't leave. So they try to make it everything just so comfortable that you're ready to leave. And they put help you with the court. They have pro bono lawyers. They have advocates that stand beside you. And they will push it to every... They will help you in every avenue of leaving your abuser. So I, I have to get to work, but I love each and every one of you all. And please remember, if you have not to listen to her, because she is a scorned lover, so she is not going to tell you the best advice. And uh, we already have proved all her, a lot of her stories are inaccurate and wrong and debunked. So please reach out to someone who cares there's not just me I'm um, lean on me at lav at gmail.com the lav is at love all victims because I do I love each and every one of you I want you to get out safe and this is not what I do on my channel but I will help you in every asset of leaving every asset of getting out of there but you can also just uh, call that 1-800 um, domestic violence or um, I also posted a text. So when you call, it doesn't mean you have to leave right then. You can make the plan right then. But don't wait too late and don't never leave in an angered fight. Because that's where it causes really bad harm. Thank you and have a wonderful day.